welcome to this real-world episode of The Flight Brothers. Today we are touring classic flying warbirds of the Collings Foundation at the Deer Valley Airport in Phoenix, Arizona. I hope you enjoy this tour. Welcome to Deer Valley Airport. Our first stop is going to be the B-25 Mitchell Bomber of the Collings Foundation. Tondaleo is a real flying aircraft, not a static museum piece. And as much as that might sound like a technicality in some ways, this experience was unlike any other. I've been to numerous museums and been very up close with World War II bombers before. But this is the first time that the actual look and smell and later the real sight of a flying aircraft came along. We were sort of joking, uh, the other flight brother and I, that everything here smells like history. Uh, when I've toured old ships, they smell like this. Old military bases smell like this. For some reason, just the smell of old canvas and oil and government equipment seems to smell the same. But 75 years later, this B-25 Mitchell still takes flight. We didn't have full access to the interior, but we were able to look up the crew ladder. You can see pretty far. It's not a very large aircraft. There's into the nose. Looking up into the cockpit, we have a lot of visibility out the top. And in Arizona, I don't know that I really appreciate that much glass up there, but they may do. They were actually selling flights. Uh, I believe it was about $450 for a ride. And we're going to watch one of those flights here in a moment. Here's the bomb bay. We had about four people standing up in here at once. It's not very large. It goes the whole width of the aircraft, so you get an idea that the aircraft is really not that large. For some reason, uh, I don't know, I sort of had an impression in my mind that these would be larger, but when you actually get up and start crawling around in it, it's not the largest aircraft there is out there. Again, everything is operational here except the weaponry. You'll see when they start up the engines, the bomb bays will close, and later when they shut down, they'll reopen again, so all the hydraulics are fully functioning. I believe from what I've read, these radial engines put out about 1,700 horsepower each. And I have a particular interest in these medium bombers. My one grandfather saw combat over Italy in a B-26 Marauder. He was the top turret gunner. Here we go, here's engine start. Since there's two of us, we were able to film from two different angles for you. I got the, the front angle. The other flight brother got the side for you. It's amazing to think, 75 years later, a lot of tender love and care has kept this aircraft operational, safely flying passengers. The bomb bays have just closed. It's fascinating to think that you can still uh, get rated for a B-25 Mitchell, a Warbird completely another era. In a moment here you'll hear the wind blow us around. There it is. The sight and smell. It's like nothing else. If you get a chance to go see these warbirds, I highly recommend it. It really is like nothing else. When you see them in the museum, odds are you're normally roped back. Don't look. Don't touch. It's certainly not going to move. For me, the worst thing about museums is the unusual way they sometimes hang them from the ceiling and overlap them, which is never ever the way you actually see an aircraft in its environment in the airport or in the air. When it gets closer to rotate and take off. That wonderful sound. A 
might expect running a uh, aviation and flight sim YouTube channel. We're both giant airplane nerds. And really just the sound of these aircraft is remarkable. You don't get to hear radials of that sort of horsepower <laughs> cruising around very often. Phoenix airspace is quite busy, usually uh, an unlimited stream of 737s, Airbus 320s, a daily 747, maybe some interesting cargo, tons of flight training from up here at Deer Valley. But World War II warbirds, not the most common thing. juxtaposition with modern business jets. Again, a really fascinating experience since my uh, grandfather told me many stories when I was younger about the war and it was obvious that being a young man of only about 18, I believe, at the time when he went in, those days left quite an impression on him as a, as a person. Base just open. Shut down the engines. I believe they've got about four paying passengers stuffed in there. Beautiful. Now we're going to move on to the B 17 Flying Fortress. This is a remarkable bird. Uh, it had a crash doing air shows and was restored after that. It's been through, I believe, the Collings website says three nuclear tests and had to undergo a decontamination period. And it also went through the war. Quite a remarkable piece of machinery. And through the tender loving care of the Collings Foundation and all of those donors inscribed on the side, we get to explore it. So let's enter through the crew hatch under the cockpit. Not a very large hatch. We're, uh, following a small child who happens to be mine here. Figured the kids should come and see a little bit of history while it's still around. We'll crawl around on our knees looking forward into the bombardiers slash navigator slash gunners area, which I have to admit, quite a few. If I was going to pay for a ride, that's where I'd want to be. This is the best view we got of a cockpit, really, since we could really stand there and look at everything. see a few pieces of modern equipment thrown in there. We have a transponder and later, there it is, we tracked the uh, flight and we actually found another, the B-17 Sentimental Journey, up at the same time. What are the odds? Two 75-year-old B-17s up in the same airspace, the same time, the same day. Cockpit's obviously functional to keep this aircraft safe for touring as well as taking passengers. It has some unique things like the four throttles there are actually overlapped. Engines one and four appear to be the upper handles and engines two and three, the inboards, are the lower. But both the inboard and outboard seem to meet for those center handles. So I guess you'd grab the centers to operate all four at once. Just a different setup. You don't really see anything like that with uh, quad jets. Not a very comfortable looking yoke, all things considered. A pretty good view. We actually had wonderful weather this day. Phoenix is uh, well known for its heat and we had a very nice day. So taking literally one step backwards, you're in the top turret area. Rear plexiglass is a little bit uh, old, as you can see, but looking around, the rest of it's nice and clear. Quite a fantastic view. They do not have any dummy guns in that position. Took a quick walk through the bomb bay, which is uh, a narrower catwalk than I really expected. It's only about as wide as your shoe. You might have about half an inch on either side. Got some dummy bombs in there. 
behind that, the radio slash gunners area. And one little surprise for me, um, I didn't expect this to have an open roof. There's an open hatch right above us now. We'll take a peek out at it in a moment after we look at the radio operator station. There's the other side, just some radio equipment. Radio stacks. Now we're going to poke our head out that open hatch. There's actually YouTube videos filmed on historic birds like this just sticking the camera out this open hatch. And it's, uh, it's remarkable. I mean, you know, you see open open aircraft, but they're usually much smaller. An aircraft of this size, it's just so interesting to see the wings and the tail out there. So here's our ball turret, and that yellow tank is the oxygen, since this uh, is going to be capable of cruising well beyond breathable airspace. Ammo, learn ammo loading. Got our side guns. Uh, all the kids had a great time with these waste guns. Uh, our own children played with them quite a bit, and when we were standing out on the ramp, I had somebody else's child uh, pretending to shoot me. I reenacted my best death scene for him. He seemed to get a kick out of it. Some of the onboard equipment. Now we're going to take a little peek back. You can't actually see the whole way back there. They've got some canvas. I'm not sure why, so we can't actually see into the tail gun area. And here we are out front. That is a newer nose piece. I believe that was one of the things that had to be restored after its crash. So let's go check out the world's only fully restored and flying B-24 Liberator. One of the sad things as time marches on, uh, I mentioned my grandfather was on the B-26 Marauder. There are no flying examples left. I believe there's only one uh, static example of the B-26 Marauder remaining, although I could be wrong about that. The Liberator is substantially taller, you can sort of just tell looking at it, and uh, inside a lot more comfortable to walk around in, you can stand up a little more freely in most areas. We have these unique Bombay doors that look more like garage doors sliding up the side. And some routine maintenance was occurring, we did uh, ask the maintenance staff if this was unexpected or not, they said no, this is routine maintenance. And just a reminder, these. Uh, Radial engines are far more labor intensive than a modern jet engine. And so all of this maintenance has to be planned. And uh, they've got to bring it all on the road. It's not like you're going to find parts for this just lying around. So nice opportunity to get to take a peek inside. And they were working on this for quite a while. A lot of tender love and care goes into keeping these old machines alive. So again, I, uh, I implore you, if, you, if one of these comes around, don't miss the opportunity. Because uh, while today there's one B-24 in the world still flying, this one, soon there won't be any. So here we go, entering through the rear hatch. We've got the waste guns. Another catwalk in the bomb bay. Now we're up front at the cockpit. We didn't get quite as good of a view because we couldn't go as far. We have the top turret there. You can even kind of tell from the video footage, this is a much taller aircraft. You can see we've got seats here, uh, the, the, the Dewalt boxes. So we actually got the impression looking around that this was sort of the, uh, the pickup truck of the air show that they were transporting more supplies and tools on here than on the other aircraft. Tractable landing lights, engine cowls. Again, many, many donors just to keep this thing operating. And really, what a, what a service they're doing to us. There's no real other way to experience these other than to see them in a museum where they don't move and they just don't have that feeling of life and the operational plan of the tarmac does. There we go. Let's go to Fighter Town for a moment. The TF-51D, I believe this is a trainer variant, you could actually pay to go up and uh, do a little bit of flying in it. I'm not sure if they'd stick you in the front or the back. 
And when we got up close, I'll be honest, it looked like a pretty cramped fit for a second second pilot in there. Uh, my other grandfather was trained as a P-51 pilot. The war ended as he was completing his training, so uh, I should be fortunate for that, or I might not be here today. I actually have his flight log book, and uh, there's one whole page flying the P-51, and uh, it's interesting. Look at the log book and the horsepower of the trainers he's flying, and then when he jumps to the P-51, and we jump up over a thousand horsepower. What a what a thrill that must have been. Unfortunately, my grandfather passed when I was uh, quite young, and uh, I'd love to hear some stories if I uh, would have had the opportunity, been a little older and known what to ask. A lot of people brought their children now. You can see random kids all over the place out here. We brought our own as well. Um, just a good thing for kids to see. A P-40 Warhawk, again a trainer variant for two seats. Sorry, everybody's in the way there and photobombing. Really great to come and see these things up close and personal. I believe they were selling the, uh, the rides in the fighters for about $3,000 <laughs> per trip. I'm not sure how long you'd go up for. I, uh, I have to admit it is a little bit tempting if you have the money to drop. So, again, this was the Collings Foundation visiting the Deer Valley Airport in northern Phoenix in 2019. And we're the Flight Brothers, so we'll see you around, plan the flight, and fly the plan.